Avram was 13 years old when his mother Amtali came to bring him back home. But Avram was not ready to go back home. He was planning in his mind to travel to Noach and learn from Noach all about the mubble, the flood. I thank you, mother, but you know I have been dreaming to meet Noach and his son Shem. Please understand me, mother. Now that it is safe for me to leave the cave, I want to visit Noah. After that, I will return home. Hashem was watching Avram very closely. Was Avram the tzaddik? Hashem had waited 20 generations and 2,000 years for. The tzaddik that Hashem had created the entire universe for. Is Avram that tzaddik? Let's see. Some great rabbis say that Avram was only 10 years old when he traveled to Nayar. Nayar was in fact Avram's great, 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 great grandfather. Yes, that's eight greats. Avram was so happy to discover that Nayar had his own yeshiva his own school, and Noach's son Shem was the head with Noach's great-grandson Ava. Avram travelled to Noach. Don't friend. rush it, my friend. That's okay. That's you okay. Need more than you I. need it more Thank than you. I. Thank you. And then he sat for hours and hours with Nayak, just listening to every detail of how the world was before the mubble, before the flood. The hours turned into days. The days turned into weeks. In the end, Avram stayed with Nayak many years. In fact, 39 years in total. One of the most amazing things he learned was how Noach was a tzaddik. Indeed, Metushalach, Lamech and Noach really were all tzaddikim, but still not as great as Avram. Can you think why that is? Why was Avram greater even than Nayak? Do you know why? Actually, Avram was different in many ways. All the other tzaddikim before learned about Hashem from other tzaddikim. But Avram had discovered Hashem completely by himself. While all alone in the underground cave and just from watching the beauty of Hashem's perfect world. Avram had no Masora till he met Nayak. He didn't know any of this information. But when he met Nayak and Nayak's son Shem and started with them for 39 years, all his previous conclusions were now confirmed. Now Avram had a burning desire for the entire world to know how good Hashem really is and how He hides behind all the kindness that He does for us. The wind is kind. It blows down branches that are dying and trees that are too old. And on very windy days, people stay home so that Hashem's wind will blow down trees and branches without anyone getting hurt. Hashem hides behind the sunshine. People think that it's the sun that's giving us warmth and light. But Hashem is hiding His kindness behind the sun. 
Hashem is hiding behind the rainfall. We think the rain is giving us water to drink and to wash ourselves. And it gives water for the food to grow from the ground, for the trees to grow fruit. But Hashem is really hiding behind the rain. Hashem's kindness is not hidden. It's obvious. And Avram now realized that everything he thought was really, really the truth. And he wanted everyone to know how much Hashem loves us all. Avram knew what his life would be all about. He planned to spend his entire life telling others about Hashem's love for all of his creation and how important it was for us to say thank you to Hashem because gratitude actually makes us happy when we realize we are blessed with so much good in our lives. Do you know how long Avram lived and learnt with Noah? A week? A month? A year? No, altogether Avram lived with Noah for 39 years. In that time, Avram wrote many books, many, many, many books, proving Hashem is the only one power behind the entire world. He wrote many books proving Hashem is the only one power behind all the planets. Avram became so brilliant in the study of the stars that later in his life, Kings traveled from east and west to hear his wisdom and ask his advice. The more he studied the planets and the details of this world, the more sure he was that Hashem wanted him to share his knowledge with the rest of the world. Avram wrote many books about how Avodah Zara was not real. He wrote 400 chapters explaining and proving that all worship of idols is one giant lie. Idols are false gods and they have no power at all. Sadly, we have lost all the books Avram wrote, except for one. And that one book is called Sefer Yetzirah the Book of Design. In that book, Avram wrote how Hashem actually created the universe using the Aleph base. And by saying the letters of the Aleph base, the words Hashem spoke created all the things of those words. And so when Hashem said in the Torah, Vayayim HaShem Yehi Ar, when Hashem said, let there be light, Vayehi Ar, the light existed. It was the letters, Aleph, Vav, Resh, which mean Ar, light. It was those letters that created the light. Avram Avinu wrote this book, Sefer Yetzirah. It's the only book we still have left from him of the many hundreds that he did write. When Avram returned home, he spent each morning writing songs of thanks to Hashem, and then he would sing them every day. No one else sang to Hashem as much as Avram. No one had ever searched to find Hashem as much as Avram. No one. More than anyone else in the entire world, Avram prayed and prayed asking for all his needs and talking to Hashem every day about everything and asking to continue taking care of his beautiful world. More than anything, he asked Hashem to help people see that he is the one creator God instead of worshipping silly pieces of stone carved into the shape of a person or an animal. Avram kept asking Hashem to make him a good servant of Hashem and give him 
the strength and the right words to teach the entire world how Hashem is the only power in the entire universe. All this time, Hashem still did not reveal himself to Avram. Hashem didn't once talk to Avram. Hashem was not ready to talk back to him. There would come a time when Hashem would speak to Avram, but it was not the right time yet. Hashem wanted to see just how much Avram really loves him. Even if Hashem let Avram talk to him and pray to him for weeks, months, and even years and years without a single answer, would Avram still trust Hashem, believe in Hashem, have emunah in Hashem, or would he eventually give up? There was only one way to find out, to give Avram some tests. Let's see if Avram loves Hashem so much that even if things get really hard, even if life is really difficult, will Avram still love Hashem? Do you know how many times Hashem tested Avram? In the next story, we will learn how Hashem tested Avram ten times.